now we're going into the ice level of the game. And considering what we went through with the previous ice level, you'd expect there to be a lot of water areas here too. But surprisingly, there's no water areas to speak of. This is one of the few 2D Sonic games not to have any sort of water level. Water only exists in a few parts of Leaf Forest. You know, the part that you would that you would run on the surface of the water. It only lasted a couple seconds and didn't have any air bubbles. So that's pretty cool. Like, more Sonic games should do that. More Sonic games should realize that we don't like water areas. I mean, if it it's pretty slow and annoying. I'm fine with a platformy level, but cheap! That's such a cheaply placed enemy. But yeah. The the weird thing about being underwater is that Tails can't swim when he's underwater in this game. Which is weird because in every other advanced game, he can swim. And Cream can't fly when she's underwater. Because that's, that's the thing, if you play as Cream, she can actually fly by twirling her ears around. Somehow. I guess she learned it from watching Tails, or hearing about him or something. And Knuckles can't glide at all under the water. Which is really weird, because again, every other advanced game, he can do that underwater. But, yeah. I like this level. This is definitely the best ice level they've ever had in, uh... Well, I don't think it's better than Ice Cap Act 2, but this is still pretty good. That's a cheap place to be. But yeah, there's, there's lots of gimmicks to this place. Like, there's a lot of... Oh, great, more cheaply placed enemies. Again, I hate enemies that are on areas with flat with flat floors and low ceilings. So you're walking forwards and you walk right into them. Like that enemy before. It didn't have a low ceiling, but still. I think if you get into the... I get, think if you get into one of those circular things with enough momentum, then you'll get to the upper part of it and be sent to the upper route. And I like how, even though this game is criticized as just being whole right to win, every level has their own gimmicks that make it feel more unique. Like, it reuses gimmicks sometimes, but it's not all just loops and stuff. It's also, like, with this level, you've got the, the ice slides, which are kind of nice. Although, sometimes, you would rather just be, you would just rather just be running, because it feels like that would make you go faster. But, it's nice to have them, at least. And, of course, I think the level is what introduces the circle things that, if you go to them with enough meta, you get sent to the top of them. I usually get sent to the bottom, though. I like that starting animation. Like, no other 2D Sonic game does that. And I like how it sort of gives you a running start right from the get-go. And it feels pretty nice. I never like those things though. I I always suck at timing them. So I never I don't usually get flung in the direction that I want to. One of the problems that I have with this game is that sometimes you run into a spring that sends you in the opposite direction from where you originally headed. So that you can progress with the level. But the problem is that you run into the spring, but because it sends you in the opposite direction, now all of a sudden you're holding the wrong direction, and so if you don't start holding the opposite direction fast enough, then Sonic will try to slow down, or screech to a halt. Which is really awkward, and they never actually fixed that in the later Dimps games. Like, that's, that's a, one of the common problems that I have with Advance 2 in general, is that there's a lot of times where you'll run into a spring, it sends you in the opposite direction, and suddenly you're not holding the right direction anymore, and so you'll slow down. But yeah, I like this level. I like the background of it. It's a night area with a moving background with spotlights and the city area and everything. The song's pretty forgettable, but it's nice at least. It tries to go for a more Christmassy route, and honestly, I prefer ice levels that have songs that are more, like, mysterious and mystical and stuff. And this is 
actually the only 2D Sonic game where pressing up doesn't make the camera scroll up. And it, that, that's really stupid. Instead, it just shows you the character's idle animation. If you do Knuckles punching idle animation, you're a bad Nick, you'll actually destroy it, which is a nice touch. But still, I don't understand why in a game with screen crunch, they don't let you look up. Although it's not that platforming the game, but still. This is easily one of my least favorite bosses in the game, and I always get really enraged fighting it. There's so many things about it that irritate me. Why do you have to do this to beat the boss? Like, the, the thing is that you have to wait until... You have to wait until the platform is to the side, and only then can you jump onto it with, with enough momentum so that it bounces you upwards and you can hit Eggman. And if you're really lucky, you can actually... You can actually bounce over to the very rightmost side of the screen and just keep on bouncing off Eggman, and you kill him really easily. There's lots of problems with this boss, though. He constantly drops those explosives, and the hitbox for the explosion on the ground is deceptively large. And it's very easy for you to get hit by it. He drops it more rapidly as you progress into the boss fight. And it, it's kind of a game of timing, like you gotta get the pattern down for when you're supposed to jump. But once again, the ground is constantly sloping, so it can screw up your jump. It's a good thing that you have the air dash, because the air dash does a lot to make the boss fights less tedious, because you can get up to the boss faster. So it really sucks fighting those bosses with characters like Tails and Knuckles, who don't have the air dash. It's because of that that I never actually beat the game with Tails or Knuckles, because I was never able to get past... I mean, I think I beat the game with Tails, but not with Knuckles. This level is pretty infamous among a lot of people because I've heard that it's impossible to beat this level, or at least beat the, the lower route, if you don't know that you have the upper air trick. Which is pretty easy to do. It's pretty easy to not know when the game was released that you had air tricks, because this game is the first game in the franchise to have air tricks like this. So it can be kind of unintuitive, but when I first played this game, I knew all about the air tricks and stuff, so... Like, like I love that part. I love how fast you go when, when those fans hit you. Like, I love those fans so much more than the ones in Starlight Zone, because it just feels so epic how you run right into them at a really fast speed, and then you stop for a few seconds for the dramatic factor, and then you turn around the opposite direction, and you feel like you're being propelled a lot faster than you were before. Like, this part of the level is my favorite part. Like, why do people not like this level? I just love that part. Like, again, I guess... I guess I like this game for simplistic reasons, like, I love how fast and thrilling it is. A lot of people like to... I think part of the reason that people like to say that they prefer platforming Sonic is because it... That's a cheaply placed enemy. I always hated the Buzz Bombers. But anyways... I feel like saying that you prefer platforming over speed kind of makes you feel like you're more smart and sophisticated and you have more classy tastes. Like, and preferring speed apparently means you're not as good of a gamer. I don't really think that's true. I mean, I guess it has some merit to it, but in my opinion, Sonic is supposed to be speedy, and if you really just want a platformy like experience and look down on speediness, then Mario is probably a better choice for you. Like, I'm just saying. I mean, I love games like Sonic 1 and Sonic 1 8 bit. It's not like I. It's not like I'm against platforming in Sonic games. It's just that I feel like they did a really good job with this interpretation. Where you're just constantly moving really quickly. If you move quickly enough for a long enough time without getting interrupted, you'll go into a prototype boost mode. And, fun fact, that's actually called the Sonic Boom. That's a really, really cheap part of the level because, like, there's not only there a spike there, but there's also a buzz bomber there that can shoot projectiles at you. So, 
you gotta jump at exactly the right time, but sometimes it's better to just stop and just be really careful about it. But anyways, it's pretty unfortunate that so many, like, there's two really great things in the franchise that are called Sonic Boom. There's the awesome Sonic CD opening song that everyone loves. And then there's the proto boost of this game. Both things associated with the now very infamous spin-off. Like, obviously, Sonic Boom was not really all that well received and... I'm so happy as a Sonic fan to say that it's not relevant anymore. Like, I'm so happy that they announced Sonic Mania in the new 3D Sonic game. Because now it's like... It's like Sonic Boom used to be like the constant focus. It was just what everyone was talking about with modern Sonic. And it was really depressing. But now the focus is not on the new 06. Now it's on the future, you know? But yeah, I like this level quite a bit. There's a lot of bottomless pits, but as long as you stay on the higher routes, which is pretty easy, you'll be fine. Although, I don't really like the tiny platforms, because you, you have a lot of momentum when you're going from right to left and left to right on them, so it can be easy to miss them. Although, I like how their hitboxes are lenient enough that, that it can be surprisingly easy to suddenly teleport onto the top of them. Like, you, you really feel like you shouldn't have been high enough to... Like that one! That's a perfect example. I really shouldn't have been able to get bounced up by that, but I'm not complaining. And I also like the giant fans that you go into and they launch you upwards. But the annoying thing is they're not consistent. So it's like, sometimes, I think most of the time, you're expected to go to the right after they launch you upwards. But occasionally, there will be a large fan that you're supposed to go left when you're launched up from it. And because of that fan, it sort of screws you up the next time you play the level because sometimes you'll hold left in the fans where you're not supposed to. But anyways, this is easily the most infamous boss in the game. That hand has a one-hit kill move. So, you can't... It's there! There it is. So, you really can't take risks and try to go for a second hit. Because if it slaps you, then you're pretty much dead. Which is especially annoying because this boss always takes multiple minutes to kill. And so, what I like to do is play it safe. But by, by playing it safe, it kind of stretches the boss out. What I recommend is, you, you gotta destroy the laser shooter first. And that always takes a few hits to kill. Although it's good that you can safely go for multiple hits at once with it. But the really annoying thing about trying to hit Knuckles here is that he has... It's not like you can just hit the side of his Eggmobile. Because that's apparently not good enough. No, you, you have to make sure that you jump high enough that you land on the top of his Eggmobile. And that's the only way you can damage him. Like, it's not, like, it's not, it's not hard enough just to get over to him. And part of the reason that I hate this boss is because of the screen crunch. Because, because the boss, because the screen is so tiny, it's not like you can always see where the hand is. And by watching the hand closely, you can tell if it's getting ready to do its attack where it kills you. But you can't always see the hand, because it'll go off screen and you pretty much have to what I'm showing you off right here is that, yeah, you hold back on the control pad and you just constantly skid to a stop. Like I, like I said, you're just forced to be constantly running here. And that's really awkward. You never had this problem in the running boss of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In the running, because in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you could just stop if you wanted to. The, the only reason there was a running boss in Mushroom Hill was because it was sort of like an auto-scrolling area where the screen was constantly moving to the right and you had to keep up with it. And so if you just if you, you could just stand still if you wanted to, it just uh, eventually you would be on the left side of the screen. I think they should have done that instead of just 
forcing you to be constantly running. But yeah, it's better to just play it safe with this boss. Because, like, sometimes you might think it's a safe time to attack, but unfortunately that isn't always the case. So it's better to just... I uh, shouldn't have been able to hit him there, but whatever. But yeah, that's the most infamous boss in the game. I don't think it's... It's not... Well, it's kind of horrible, but... I guess I played worse. Okay, here's an inconsistency right away. He's covered in... Like, he, look at him right now. Right now, he's just fine. You let Eggman dupe you! Again! Yeah, Sonic's pretty sick of his shit by this point. Like, I really like that character moment between them. Like, I, I just like how they actually lampshade the fact that Sonic would naturally get really sick of how Knuckles is constantly turning on him. See you in the next part.